Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 17 of Ultimate Exotics, the review series for the top tier supercars of Gran Turismo 6's current lineup. And in this episode we're featuring a car which is pretty historically important for many reasons. It's set quite a few benchmarks in the supercar world and in the production car world in general. It's a very notable car for Ferrari in general and also a massively respected and widely loved supercar. It is of course the 1992 Ferrari F40. Many people consider this to be the best Ferrari ever made. From what I've heard people mention, it's many people's choice of their favourite car, especially petrol heads who are slightly older, who have more of an appreciation for when cars used to be purely mechanical, rather than becoming very electronic and technical based with fancy wings and computers and driving aids. Not that that's a bad thing, but I personally would agree that cars that were more mechanical do have a, a certain special appeal about them. They're more raw, more driver oriented. And this car really comes from a time when that was the case with virtually any supercar. This car had some fantastic rivals at the time, notably the McLaren F1 came out shortly after, the Porsche 959, the Bugatti EB110, the Diablo, and my personal favourite supercar, the Shizetta V16T. On the game, however, the car only really has one natural rival, and that would be the McLaren F1. They're a similar age and built for a similar purpose, racing cars for the road. The Shizetta, although the same age, can't really be compared to it because it's more of a rolling art piece than a racing car. And the Diablo, well, the Diablo of this age isn't on the game at all, so that's not really a fair comparison either. Now, the car, of course, was built to mark Ferrari's 40th anniversary. It was the last car, from what I remember, that Enzo Ferrari himself oversaw the production of. And that's a pretty good car to go out on, to be honest. And I would say that even though I'm not a fan of the car, I'm not a huge Ferrari fan in general. My dream car is a Ferrari, but I'm not really a fan of the, the company overall. I don't dislike them, I just don't particularly like them either. This car though, I have a lot of respect for. Again, I don't love the thing, but like the Nissan GTR, the Bugatti Veyron, the McLaren F1, and some other select vehicles through history, I have a lot of respect for this, because it was a milestone, a technical achievement. Things that it achieved were beyond just being a nice car. They were important for the automotive industry as a whole. For instance, this was the first production car, if my memory serves me correctly, that could exceed 200 miles per hour, and actually proved that. The Porsche 959 almost achieved a similar speed, but not quite. The Porsche, I believe, if I remember correctly, was about 197, whereas this Ferrari has a top speed of about 201. Again, if my memory also serves me correctly, I believe this was the first production road car to utilise as much carbon fibre in its construction as this car did. Again, another massive milestone in performance cars, which is primarily considered for racing use, of course, carbon fibre due to its cost, and really it's mainly relevant for racing rather than road use. But cars like the F40 paved the way for technologies like that to be used in more supercars, where we get to the point today where very few supercars are made of anything but carbon fibre. In terms of sheer spec, it's a very impressive car for the time. 2.9 litre turbocharged engine, mid-mounted as you can pretty much tell from the look, drives the rear wheels as you'd expect from a Ferrari, and as I mentioned earlier, it's a very driver-oriented, very raw, very back-to-basics, mechanical supercar. To put it crudely, it's, it's almost like the Land Rover of supercars. It's just about what you need being there. Nothing more, nothing less. Very angular. It doesn't really care what it looks like. As it happens, it looks pretty good. But it's function, fall, or form following function, I should say. Fully upgraded, it puts out 752 horsepower and 569 pound-feet of torque. It weighs in at a little bit more than you might expect for such a bare-bones car, but it's still no heavyweight at just over 1,100 kilos. And thanks to that relatively low weight, even without having anywhere near power that leads its class, 
it still puts out a very respectable 676 horsepower per ton and sits at 607 pp. The price is surprisingly good, I would say, for a car of its importance at 450,000 credits. They could easily charge a million credits for this car, and to be honest, I'm surprised that they didn't, because it's arguably the most important Ferrari supercar on Gran Turismo, even more so than the Enzo, really, although I personally prefer the Enzo. In terms of performance, fully tuned, you're looking at around the 275 region without NOS or draft. The acceleration is very strong, as you'd expect. The handling is a little bit trickier than some, similar to cars like the Lancia Stratos or the Cobra. It requires more fine-tuning, more fettling to get the best out of it. It's not just the kind of car that you can jump in and drive fast, because you will crash. It's a car which requires a more experienced driver and someone who knows how to set up their car for their particular driving style and driving needs. It is very much a race car for the road. And all that that implies, good and bad. As far as on the game, it feels almost unfair to compare it to other vehicles in the supercar class. But as a collector's piece, it's a great car. So, that's it for this episode. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.